Hello friends, welcome again. And today we will discuss a very important topic that is the design of drainage layer in rigid pavements. New pavements are practically impermeable, but with the passage of time, the joints, median and cracks allow the water to infiltrate into the pavement. It can be through cracks in the pavement or it can be through a lane shoulder drop or maybe opening between shoulder and concrete pavement. As early as 1820, John McAdam noted that regardless of the thickness of the pavement, many roads in Great Britain deteriorated rapidly when the subgrade was saturated. And the excess amount of water in pavement layers can reduce the service life. Now, moisture in the subgrade and the pavement can come from many different sources. It may seep up from the water table either through capillary action or through vapor movements or may flow laterally from pavement edges and side ditches or it may through surface infiltration through the joints cracks and shoulder edges and some studies have shown that up to 40 percent of rainfall enters the pavement structure prolonged exposure of a layer to moisture can soften the pavement layer and subgrade. It can degrade the material quality and also can result in loss of bond between the layers. Therefore, a major objective in pavement design should be to keep the base, subbase, and subgrade free from saturation condition. And four approaches are generally used to control or reduce the moisture problem. The first, prevent moisture from entering the pavement system. The second, use of materials that are insensitive to the effect of moisture. Third, incorporate design features to minimize the moisture damage. And fourth, quickly remove the moisture that enters the pavement system. Now, the, in the first approach, adequate cross slope and long term slope is provided. And this is the most effective means of minimizing the surface infiltration. Another common approach to limit the surface water in the pavement is to seal the joints and cracks and other discontinuities. In the second method, we use lean concrete subbase or cementated base or asphaltated base or it may be granular base with low fines. These are the materials which are insensitive to the effect of moisture. In the third approach, we use the double bars of sufficient size and spacing and this is the most cost effective solution to joint faulting problems. Tight shoulders to keep lane shoulder joint tight or granular drainage layer between the subgrade and stabilized base course to reduce erosion beneath the base or it may be providing adequate side drains. The fourth approach is to quickly remove the water that enters the pavement system and that can be achieved through surface drainage or groundwater drainage or subsurface drainage. Now, such systems are only effective for free water and water held by capillary forces in soil or in fines cannot be drained. The purpose of today's session is to design a drainage layer to facilitate quick disposal of water that may enter into the subgrade. IRC 58 suggests that drainage layers should be provided in all major highways in areas having annual rainfall more than 1000 mm and the minimum permeability of the material to be used as drainage layer should be 300 meter per day or greater and the gradings which are given in MORT specifications for GSB are not suitable as their permeability is less than 12 meter per day and therefore gradings which are practiced in other countries are suggested and these are the gradings given in IRC 58 and 4, 6 and 7 can be used because they have the permeability value of 300 meter per day to 850 meter per day. Now design of drainage layer means choosing a grading which will meet the requirement of permeability. And both are important, permeability as well as stability. If DLC is provided as sub-base, then it will bear all the 
construction traffic and also will provide a strong support to the pavement. And grading four, six, and seven are suitable for drainage layer without any stabilization because they are the, the, the materials or gradation which will provide both permeability and stability. But for other gradings, you need to stabilize it either with the bitumen or with cement. Now, when you treat a grading with 2% bitumen, then the effect on permeability is very marginal as shown in this table that a untreated material will have a 46,000 per meter per day permeability, which will reduce to 40,000 with 2% bitumen. And cement treatment also will have the similar kind of effect. The thickness of the layer will depend upon the permeability and the quantity of the infiltration of water, but IRC 58 suggests a minimum of 100 millimeter thickness for drainage layer and the maximum size of aggregate is recommended as around 40 millimeter. Laboratory test must be done to ascertain the permeability of the material and that can be done using the method given in ISTO T215. But if this test is not available or conducting of permeability test is not possible, then two parameters D60 and D10 can give a fair idea of permeability. Now, D60 is effective size of aggregate corresponding to 60% passing and D10 is the effective size of aggregate corresponding to 10% fines so or 10% passing. The coefficient of uniformity Cu that is D60 upon D10 is also calculated and that should be in the range of 2 to 8. The physical property is determined based on loss and separation test and this value should be less than 40 percent. Now I have given one example here, two gradings are taken here, grading 1 and grading 2. Grading 1 is blue 1 and grading 2 is orange 1. Now for grading 1, D10 corresponding to 10 percent fine is 3 millimeter and for grading 2, it is just 0.5 millimeter. Now larger the value of D10, more will be the permeability of the mix. And D10 should be greater than 2 millimeter. For better performance of the material, D10 should be greater than 2 millimeter. And here you can see that this grading blue one is better than the orange one. And if you see D60, D60 for grading one, is 8 millimeter that is here d60 is around 8 millimeter and for grading 2 it is 6.5 millimeter and therefore the the coefficient of uniformity will be 2.7 for grading 1 and 13 for grading 2 and what the the code says that this value should be 2 to 8 Very high value is also not suggested. For a single size aggregate, the CU will be 1. And therefore, grading 1 is better in terms of permeability. Now, quantum of water entering the pavement can be estimated by two methods, infiltration ratio method or crack infiltration method. And IRC suggests this method of uh, estimating the quantum of water and permeability of the drainage layer is so selected that the total outflow capacity of the layer is greater than the inflow of rainwater into the pavement. The infiltration rate can be calculated using this equation where all these parameters IC is the crack infiltration rate in meter cube per day per meter and IRC suggests a default value of 0.223 uh, to be used in this equation and see the number of long joints or cracks that will depend upon the number of lanes. WC length of transverse joints that will depend upon the width of the pavement. WP is the width of the pavement subjected to infiltration that is the carriageway plus hard shoulders and CS is the spacing of transverse joints generally 4.5 meter and KP is rate of infiltration through uncracked pavement surface which can be assumed to be zero. 
We take one example here to illustrate how to determine the permeability of the drainage layer. A four lane divided cement concrete pavement in an area having annual rainfall of 1,500 meter millimeter per year. The width of carriageway is seven meter plus 1.5 meter concrete shoulder plus one meter unpaved shoulder on each side of the carry of the median. The slab thickness 300 millimeter, DLC layer 150 millimeter, transverse joint spacing 4.5 meter, camber 2.5 meter, side slope of magment 2 is to 1, and longitudinal gradient is 3 percent. Estimate the permeability requirement for 150 millimeter thick drainage layer. Now this is the payment section. The total thickness here of the slab and DLC is 300 plus 150, 450 millimeter thick. 7 meter this is a median, 7 meter is the pavement width, 1.5 meter is hard shoulder, paved shoulder and 1 meter is unpaved shoulder. And this is the slope 2 is to 1. So the total width of the drainage layer at this point that is below DLC will be 7 meter plus 2.5 meter that is shoulder plus this extra width because of embankment that is 2 into 0 0.45. 0 0.45 is the depth of the slab and DLC. So that is 10.4 meter. That is the width of the tennis layer. Now this is the transverse direction of the pavement and this is the longitudinal direction of the pavement. Transverse slope is 2.5 percent. Longitudinal slope is 3 percent and therefore AB which you calculated in earlier slide that is 10.4 meter the water will travel in transverse direction at a slope of 2.5 percent and in long term direction at a slope of 3 percent it will cover longer distance in the same time and therefore AC will be 10.4 into 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.025 that is ratio of two slopes 12.48 it means this AC will be 12.48 meter and because the slope is provided in two directions transverse and longitudinal therefore actual direction of flow will be along this diagonal and this will be you can calculate what is the length of this AD you can calculate AD by square root of AB square plus AC square and that is 16.24 meter. Now effective gradient along AD will be drop in elevation from A to D divided by length of AD and this drop in elevation will be drop in elevation from A to B plus drop in elevation from A to C. So that is drop in elevation along AD will be 10.4 meter is the distance at the rate of 2.5 percent plus 12.4 is the length of AC at the rate of 3 percent that is 0.634 meter and therefore the effective gradient along AD will be 0 0.634 divided by length of AD that is 16.24.039. This is the gradient along the movement of the water. Infiltration rate can be calculated using this equation where crack infiltration rate IC is taken as 0.223 that is default value and C number of joints cracks it is three then there will be one joint here between the lanes there will be one joint here between the lane and the shoulder and the third joint at the paved shoulder here now wc is the length of transverse joints that is uh, 7 meter plus 1.5 meter hard shoulder that is 8.5 meter wp width of pavement subjected to infiltration that is the total width 9.5 meter and spacing of transverse joints 4.5 meter. So and KP value can be taken 0 and you can calculate this QI is 0 0.115 meter cube per day per meter square. Now the amount of infiltrated water per meter width flowing along AD will be this 16.24 that is the length of the AD diagonal multiplied by 0 0.115 that is 1.868 meter cube per day per meter width of drainage layer and this is capped equal to KIA where K is the permeability, I is the gradient and A is the area of drainage path. 
So if you take, let us say, 150 uh, millimeter as the depth of the drainage layer, which is given in the question, so area will be 1 meter into 0 0.15 meter square or 150 meter thick drainage layer. And I is 0 0.039, which we calculated, that's the gradient along AD. And that gives you the value of K as 319 meter per day. And you choose a grading which will give you the permeability of 320 meter per day. So that is how a drainage layer is designed. I hope you like this session. Thanks for watching and you can write your comments or suggestion in the comment box.